everyone, welcome to the live coaching session for questioners on how to achieve your goals and stick to your habits in 2020. So the questioner is the last of the four tendencies that I've been covering in these sessions. And the four tendencies is a personality framework created by Gretchen Rubin um, that helps us understand how we meet expectations differently. So in this session, I'll be talking a bit about what a questioner is, how you can recognize one, and any experiences that you might have yourself as a questioner, um, the strengths and the weaknesses of being a questioner, and some useful strategies for questioners to help you work towards your goals. So let's dive in. So a questioner... So the question of tendency, it's worth me saying, is something I'm pretty experienced in because this is my tendency. Questioners meet only inner expectations, which means that it doesn't mean they won't meet external expectations, but only if they can turn them in to inner expectations um, using their own reason and judgment. So they're very, um, being a questioner, if, if is a bit like a never-ending um, dialogue in your head, constantly questioning, should I be doing this? Is this the right way? Um, it, you know, what should I be doing right now? What's the most important thing? What needs to get done? Is this, is there another way? Is this what I want to be doing? You know, it can be kind of relentless to have to question absolutely every single thing and decision that you make. <laughs> um, so questioners tend to spend a lot of time um, reflecting. Um, questioners are not necessarily very impulsive people. Normally when they make a decision, it's really based on their own personal reason and judgment, um, even if the matter flies in the face of the status quo. But they will have usually thought things all the way through, done a lot of research, um, you know, looked a lot of data before coming to a decision. Um, a question or motto might be, if I don't see that something is a priority, I won't do it. And that's definitely something that I recognize in myself. I think my kind of obsession with purpose and productivity definitely comes from my questioner nature. And um, I definitely am always analyzing the best way to do things um, in everything that I do. An interesting thing about questioners is that while we ask a lot of questions of ourselves and of others, we generally don't like to be questioned. Um, it may be because when someone questions our decision making, we've already done so much work thinking about arriving at that conclusion that it's so frustrating to us to have to justify our reason and our logic. Um, Questioners tend to be attracted to work environments or environments where they can challenge. They can obviously ask questions. They can um, challenge the status quo. They can do a lot of research. They can show, you know, show logical thinking. A lot of questioners find themselves in intellectual pursuits. Um, and as a questioner, I have found myself in rooms full of other questioners, like as a strategist and as someone who's worked historically with a lot of data. And it's be always very funny to me when you put a lot of questioners in a room and they're all questioning each other, the amount of hostility and tension that is caused by the questioner on questioner dynamic. Um, strengths of questioners. Questioners tend to be very comfortable uh, in challenging authority and are also very comfortable not following conventional behavior. So they do share that. They overlap a little bit there with rebels. Um, they also tend to be quite self-disciplined. So when a questioner is at their best, they have the self-discipline of an upholder, the reliability of an obliger, and the authenticity of a rebel. When a questioner feels like they can turn something into an inner expectation, they are really unstoppable. They will follow things all the way through as whilst preserving themselves. 
Um, questioners also have a very strong urge to customize because of our questioner love of doing things our own way, of researching different ways to do things, of you know analyzing things very carefully. Um, we tend to want to do, you know, we're very good at cherry picking what we like and weaving it all together. So if you're a questioner, really lean into your own way of doing things. Don't feel you have to um, take a blueprint or a strategy or do something the other way that someone else is doing it. You can simply cherry pick the bits that you like and create your own design. Weaknesses of questioners. A big questioner uh, weakness comes from our love and drive to research and investigate and study because over-researching can lead to information paralysis where we actually are unable to make a decision and move forward. Um, questioners who struggle with information overload or research paralysis can find that big decisions in their lives or businesses are not being made and they can get stuck in a kind of prison of their own making because there's always something else to research, there's always something else to perfect. And, you know, and I find myself in that situation many times where I'm unable to move forward because I'm totally overwhelmed with analysis paralysis. One other weakness of questioners in more of a team dynamic is that because of our relentless urge to question everything, um, we can sometimes not be seen as a team player and we can be seen as a bit of an agitator. Um, also questioners tend to only be happy meeting the expectations of people who we deeply respect. Um, and like rebels, questioners run the risk of being seen as the opposition party, um, as simply questioning and reacting rather than acting. So it's really important as a questioner to um, kind of reduce the amount of reacting you need to do in your environment by surrounding yourself with people that you like and respect. Also, a really important thing for questioners, and I've learned this the hard way, is that we, you know, we question everything, it's our instinct, but we must develop self-awareness in how we pose questions because we can easily upset people we can easily offend or make things difficult unintentionally because our questioning is seen as criticism or attack. So skillful questioners are people who've learned how to ask questions in ways that feel very constructive, very caring and very non-threatening. Um, the journalist, TV journalist Louis Theroux is a really great example of a questioner role model in the way that he asks really transparent and quite intrusive and quite shocking questions of his um, subjects and his TV shows, yet they never f feel like he's taking advantage of them. And so he's able to create incredible stories. Um, another quite funny questioner weakness is that questioners can fall prey to crackpot tendencies. So the questioner's relentless uh, desire for information and our willingness to challenge authority to go against the grain and to seek out the kind of the unknown and the unsaid and to take it as far as we can means that we can uh, we, we can risk getting a little bit deluded um, and Gretchen Rubin says that probably most conspiracy theorists are questioners um, health practitioners have a very difficult time with questioners because we tend to question any advice we're given. Um, so that's something definitely to be aware of and it's something that I check myself on too. Okay, how can questioners work to achieve our goals and stick to those habits in 2020? For a questioner, it's absolutely essential at any moment that we know why we're doing something and what the purpose is. So you must believe in the purpose of your own goal. For a questioner, if something is at all unclear, vague, half-baked, you won't do it. So when you're working towards a goal, really take the time to tease out the why behind this goal, why you're working towards it, write it down and keep it to hand. 
Um, as questioners, we love logic and reason. So use frameworks and systems to help you to make decisions to get clarity. A lot of my practice as a coach and as a strategist comes from my questioner nature, where I've, you know, I use or I design my own frameworks to help me make difficult decisions because I have so much information to sift through. Um, talking about the analysis paralysis again, um, sometimes limiting yourself, setting self-imposed boundaries, limiting information consumption, giving yourself self-imposed deadlines or limits that make sense. So for instance, um, you know, I will try three options before choosing one. Um, I will interview five candidates for this role maximum and I will choose one. Or um, for me, what I found when I want to, you know, do big projects, unless I have a powerful why behind it, I find it difficult to prioritize. So I tend to generate deadlines for myself. Like for instance, when I built my first website, um, what helped me do the work to actually build it and get it live was that I had a public speaking engagement, which I wanted to have a website to put on the final slide. So that was my self-imposed deadline to actually get it done. Having the public speaking engagement was my why behind getting my website live. Um, and likewise, I'm writing a book proposal and I've entered a competition which has a fixed deadline, which means that now I have a why behind getting the book proposal done. Otherwise, I wouldn't see it as a priority and it would just sit there for months, maybe even years. Another um, question of weakness is that we tend to be a bit like cup holders. We have perfectionistic tendencies. So imperfect action is really the key here, especially for entrepreneurs and self-employed people is to really you know, run small experiments that you can customize and start taking small action. Otherwise, as questioners, we can find ourselves, you know, we, well, there's always a better way of doing something, we need a bit more work or a bit more research, or a bit more time, and we can end up really slowing ourselves down by just getting so stuck in our own processes. So embracing imperfect action and just taking small steps consistently can be really, really key, especially for working on those big, meteor goals. Um, and finally, in terms of how we measure our success with our goals and our habits, questioners, um, our love of reason and logic and systems means that we, we're quite comfortable with data. We like data and we like proof. So really um, experiment with using trackers, whether that's a fitness tracker for your health goals, um, a wall chart, time tracking, I mean, definitely my use of productivity tools definitely stems from the fact that I'm a questioner and I love to have data and systems and I like to be able to track my performance. Um, so there we go. There are some strategies to help you as a questioner work towards your goals in 2020. Um, I hope that this series of videos has been useful. Um, we even just to discover more about yourself, but also for the people around you, I would encourage to watch um, some of the other videos about profiles are different to yours because no doubt you will recognize some people that you know and love in them. The Four Tendencies Framework is not a hard and fast system. It's simply a tool which could be useful for you or not. So thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in another video soon.